we're going to go over vector and parametric form of planes. So we've talked about lines before, but now we're going to be talking about planes. And planes are very similar, both forms, vector and parametric, to the equation of a line. The only difference on a plane is we'll have a second directional vector. So this has to be in three space, okay? Because two space is a plane in itself. So our R0 still represents any point on that plane instead of the line. And we have directional vector A and a directional vector B. So very similar to before, we had our vector R is equal to a point on the plane plus a parameter and a directional vector. And we're just going to add another parameter and another directional vector. And both S and T can be any number. Those are the parameters in front of our directional vectors. It can be written out a little longer like this. And we know we can relate the parametric form by simply connecting our x values. And this time, we're just going to have an extra parameter and directional vector value. So let's go down the three spacing. Try to kind of get an idea of what this is. I'll try to represent it as best I can. Let's say we have two coordinates here. And we won't even actually give them values. I just want to show the idea. Of it. We have this line maybe going into three space. And we'll say this line going into three space. These two lines. If think of it like we're adding them together almost, we can make a parallelogram which can be used to represent a plane in space. Okay. So if I extend these, the area between them is essentially representing our plane. Okay. And the two directional vectors we used from the origin will help us define this plane. And we'll be able to find a point or an infinite amount of points along this plane. So we had two directional vectors in this case. I started with this one here going this way. We'll call it O and P. And this one we had O and we'll call it Q. So we used two directional vectors to set up this plane in three space. And to define it, we need both the directional vectors and a point. Okay. So if I was to give this a value, maybe I could say it was at... Um, 8, 6, and negative 4-ish. No, that wouldn't look too great. I'm going to actually use real values instead. Um, but this is the idea of a plane. Okay, so let's say we have three points in space. Okay, so we have coordinate A, B, and C. Okay, and we're going to take some directly from our textbook. That way we don't run into any little error. We got rid of A, B, and C, and we just took points directly out of our book, S, Q, and R. Okay, so these are three points, and we're going to try to represent the equation of a plane in vector and parametric form that would contain these points. Now, in order to do that, let's get an idea here. Let's say this is point P and this is point Q. Okay, it's going to create some vector which we can find a directional vector of. That directional vector will be applied to our origin in three space. Okay, so it'll give us one directional vector for PQ. And there'll be a third point, we'll call it point R. And we can use from Q to R, or we can use from P to R to represent it. We'll use P to R in this case to represent a second directional vector from the origin. Once we have our two directional vectors, we can use any three of the points to represent a point on the plane. Okay, but the tough part is finding the directional vectors, which it's actually not that hard in the end. We know that we can find a directional vector from any two points. So let's take P and Q, and we want to find the directional vector of that. We're going to take our values. We know if we take x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1, we can find our directional vector. So uh, 1, 2, 3. Well, that's wrong. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. 1, 2, 2, 2. So x2 in this case is negative 2 x1 is 1, so we have plus 2. y2 is 3, minus 3. And z2 is 2, minus 1. Okay. So this will start to give us our first directional vector, which is 0, 0, 1. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Okay. So there's our directional vector for pq. And we'll also take 
P, that should be an R, a directional vector for PR. So I'm going to change my values a little. That'll still be 1. These will be our 2s in this case. Okay. So when we go to plug them in, x2 minus x1 becomes plus 2. Uh, y2 is 0 minus 3 and 1 minus 1. Our second directional vector will be 3, negative 3, and 0. Okay. So in vector form, we know that can be written as our plane, and usually actually we won't write, well, they've written R here, but eventually planes start to be known as um, the Greek letter pi when we use it in Cartesian form. Because it's this lesson, they've written it that way in our example, we'll keep it this way. R is equal to, we still don't have an R naught yet, and we'll choose one eventually, which is X naught, Y naught, and Z naught. Plus, we'll just say parameter S in front of our first directional vector, which is 0, 0, 1. And we'll use the parameter t for our second directional vector, which is at 3, negative 3, and 0. And that is our vector form of the equation. Okay. Let's say they wanted the oops, parametric form. It's very similar. We're still going to be isolating for x, y, and z. The only difference being is we're going to have an extra coefficient and variable involved in each equation. Um, oh, I do actually actually give us a point too. So we'll just choose any of the points. Uh, we'll use point R, 1, 0, 1. So 1, 0, 1. We didn't need to choose a point, sorry, for our vector form. We can't just leave it as x naught, y naught, 0. We want an actual coordinate. So there's our coordinate. So that means if we're going through our x values, we know that x will be equal to 1, s times 0, and t times 3, which is 1 plus, we'll leave it as 0s, just so it makes sense to you guys, and 3t. For y, we have 0 plus 0s plus minus 3t. And for our z value, we have 1 plus 1s plus 0t. These can all be simplified. X in this case is 1 plus 3t. Y is equal to negative 3t. And finally, Z is equal to 1 plus S. Okay. So that would be our parametric form of this plane in this equation. So we've now taken three points, turned them into an equation of a plane, and changed it from vector to parametric form. Another type of question you might encounter is they give us an actual line. So to determine the equation of a plane that contains point P, and the equation of this line is already in vector form. Okay, So that idea being that we have some line here, and we have some other point P, we'll call it, at negative 1, 2, and 1. This being our equation for vector r. This is all going to be contained in some plane. Okay, So these are all going to exist in some plane. We just have to figure out the equation of that plane. And in order to do that, they have given us some information. We have our directional vector here, which helps us for equation of a line. We also have a point on this line. Let's just say that point is here for argument's sake. And we'll call it r0. Okay. This point being 2, 1, and 3. We now know that I can create, once we have two points, we can create a directional vector between the two of them. So we're going to take a new directional vector from R to point P. That way, we have one, two directional vectors. And with two directional vectors, we can create the equation of a plane. And we'll also have a point on that plane, which is represented here or here. Both of them will be points on this plane. So all we have to do is find the second directional vector. We already have one. They've made this question actually relatively easy for us, though it might seem hard to start. So let's take our two points. Um, first point being R0 at 2, 1, and 3. And our second point P at negative 1, 2, and 1. We're going to find our directional vector for these two points. We could also call that vector R0P. Okay, so we take our 1, 1, 1, 
and x2, y2, z2, and we subtract to find our values. So we have negative 1 subtract 2, 2 subtract 1, and 1 subtract 3. Is everyone okay with how they got those values? Just x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z. So that gives us an x, a y, and a z value, which means our directional vector will be at negative 3, 1, and 2. Our other directional vector was already given to us in the equation of the line at 4, 1, and 5. And these are both points on the plane, so it doesn't matter which of them you use in our vector form. We'll do both forms. So in vector form, we have our vector, or sorry, our plane. I shouldn't be saying vector. Our plane will use point P in this case of negative 1, 2, and 1, plus parameter S for our first directional vector, negative 3, 1, and negative 2, and parameter T for our second directional vector of 4, 1, and 5. Scroll up. In fact, I'll zoom out a little because I do want to take this a little farther. Don't you need to uh, use 2 and 3 as your positional because then it, that would be the point. So since we now have an equation of our plane specifically, we can put this into parametric form. And like before, it is usually easy if we just set it up as x, y, z. And we write the same vector form, negative 1, 2, 1, plus. And in this case, if this helps you, you can use your distributive property by multiplying the scalar into each vector. So the vector now is written as negative 3s, s, and negative 2s, plus 4t, t, and 5t, if this helps you. And then we'll end up with x is equal to negative 1, whoops, minus 3s, plus 4t, y is equal to 2, plus s, plus t, and z is equal to 1, minus 2s plus 5t. So there's everything we did with planes.